no gi and gi attack series from the mount. Make sure if you mount someone, you finish them. Hey guys, Coach Tom, I'm here today with Reese. We're gonna have a look, guys, at uh, basic mount attack series. Uh, it's Australian summer right now, so I'm gonna base this off no gi. Uh, however, all of these moves are applicable in the gi and they're just as easy. So let's have a look. The reason that I, we do this as no gi though is a lot of students, in particular white and blue belts, uh, tend to struggle in no gi uh, when it comes to the mount because they feel once they lose their cross choke and Ezekiel and things that they tend to run out of options. I'm going to show you that that's not the case, okay? The mount is the position you want to be in. So, if Reese is lying down here and I'm in mount, okay, I'm off to a pretty good start. I've already got mount. However, what we want to do, I'll rotate you over here, the first thing we want to do is attack his neck so he can't keep two lower elbows. So, if Reese really wanted to protect his position, he'd keep his elbows quite low here. Uh, and of course, if this was in the gi, I'd try to cross choke him now to punish him for having like low hacks. Because unless you've got this freakishly long forearm, if your elbows are by your sides, your wrists should not reach your neck. And if you protect your neck, your elbows should be out. So, I like to, do, to attack the neck to get the elbows out. Beginners will have them out, but don't rely on rolling with beginners to get results. So if his arms are low, I like to lean all the way this way and wrap this hand round. Obviously if I don't lean this way when I do that, he could roll me that way because I'm giving him my post. So I'm going to lean all the way this way and then what I like to do is I like to attack a no gear Z heel. So I'm just going to go under his chin here and grab and I can start trying to apply. Now guys, there's a million ways you can do the no gear Z heel. Alright, you can do it like this. Just grab your hand and put your fist in his neck and squeeze. You can cut it down on his neck. You can hold your bicep and then hook under your other. I mean, get your two forearms and choke the guy's neck. I would suggest practicing with a partner that you are comfortable drilling with or on a grappling dummy like we have at our academy and practice and find the way to squeeze a neck that suits your arms. I don't really care if you can finish him with it. I just want to choke him enough here like this, enough that he gets his hands up to try to protect. And now I'm going to slide my left knee up as high as I can. I like to get the top of my patella past his deltoid here, almost up to the crown of his head. Okay? Once I've slid that up like that, it's really imperative now that I keep weight on him. And so how I choose to keep weight on people is through my right elbow. So from this position, I say attack his neck, I slide up my knee, but then I've got his head up and his shoulder pit. See, unfortunately, I've gotten rid of my posting ability by sliding this knee up. So we could roll me this way. So I like to pin the shoulder to stop the roll. So if he tries to roll me, I've got his shoulder pinned. It's just very effective. Uh, also, even if he can't, turn this way much, he can bridge. So I'm actually going to limit his bridging ability by lifting his head up. If his head is lifted up when he goes to do a big bridge, it's not the same as if his head is down and he goes to do a big bridge, right? He can really move it. So once I've got to this position here and I've got him here, now I'm gonna start to get my attacks going. So once I'm here, I'm gonna grab his elbow and pull it to me. Now sometimes your arms aren't as strong as him, okay? So when he tries to hide his arm down, hide it. If you grab it like this, pull with all your legs. Okay, push off your legs, lean with your body. And now bring up your leg and make sure you, I like to get my heel above his shoulder line. Depends on your build. Now we're at this position. It's important I don't worry about pressure this way. I tighten it like a bottle top, like this. Like you're putting the uh, cap on a Coke bottle. So I'm just here, just going to tighten it up. And now I'm going to come under and underhook that top arm. Now from this position, I can just bring my knee here and get a tap right here. It's very easy. At a high level, I might, if I can't get the break, have to fall back and get the arm bar here. Okay? But no big deal. Most of the time you should get the tap from on top. It's quite fun, you should try. So I'm here, I attack the neck. He defends, so I get my knee high. Once I got my knee high, head up, elbow pin, grab that elbow, pull it up, and now tighten the bottle top. 
you should be facing 90 degrees away from them. Now I'm gonna underhook this top hand and I put all my body weight through my right hip. Creep my leg around until I get my knee here and I have my tap. If I need to, I'll fall down. But my lead is over his head before my butt hit the ground. Very important there. However, not everyone likes arm bars. So, sometimes we find ourselves in this position here where we've moved up into S mount and the guy's trying to hide his arm a bit. But this one, he's trying to hide it a bit. So then, I'm gonna grab this arm and I'm gonna make sure I've pulled it out and now I wrap up for a, just like a, an Americana, just like it's your first class of jiu-jitsu. And then just rotate this Americana, but make sure you're tugging in, tucking in this leg really tightly. Because the Americana will come on at a rate that's kind of commensurate to the amount of uh, shoulder control we have. So if I lose a loose shoulder, I can rotate him a fair bit, and he sort of has to tap there. Right? It's like a fair bit of movement, right? If I can tuck him in tight like this, now I do, look, like an inch. So don't think that your legs, like, it's very important. Even though you're just twisting his arm, what your legs do is very important. So that's another one I really like. Uh, from this position, if you can get to here and you can get up and get to this position, if you're under this arm like I am now, notice how I want it, I've got, I've got my arm bar. But sometimes guys are gonna pull that elbow out. He pulls it out. So then he's left this guy all alone. And sometimes going for the mountain to triangle here is a bit too hard for those who aren't flexible. So I'm gonna grab this and I'm gonna pull it out. I'm trying to not let his other hand get to it. And now I just wrap my right arm around right here. Push. This is the only time that when I do this attack, guys, that I actually use my thumbs. All other times I do Americanas and Kimuras, no thumbs. For this one, I use my thumbs. Okay, you can try with thumbs, without thumbs, but this particular one, I tend to just go grab, grab, and apply, and I feel actually the thumbs make it better. It's the only one I do like that, okay? So there's our S-mount attack series. There's a lot of stops and a lot of submissions we could have done, guys. But those kind of two arm bars, one if you like to fall down always, that arm bar, that is tried and true. If he wants to defend it, then we're gonna take the Americana. But if he wants to defend the Americana and tuck that away, he'll give us the armbar. Of course, if he didn't wanna give us the S-mount, it means his arms are down here. And then our Nogi Ezekiel will come in very handy, okay? Thanks for watching, guys. Enjoy submitting people from Mount with this S-mount series. Take it easy, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching the video, guys. I hope you loved it. For more free videos, click here. And if you'd like to get our free Footlock Masterclass, please click here. And if you'd like to help support me so I can help bring you high-level jiu-jitsu for free every day, please click here. Thank you for watching, guys. I'm Coach Tom. I'll see you next time.